Continuiamo adesso, uh, let us continue now uh, talking about uh, how to design a trajectory in the operational space, in the Cartesian space. Uh, in the previous uh, hour, we basically had uh, an overview of the problem and uh, we have uh, an instrument to build a trapezoidal velocity profile, so to build a time loop. Okay? This can be applied to the joint, for example, but for any variable. And we will use it also for the operational space trajectory. But first of all, uh, I need to, 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 to develop what is, uh, I mean, drawn here very simply. I need to develop uh, a way to, uh, to have uh, a trajectory for position orientation. As you can imagine, position will be easy, orientation will be a little bit more subtle. Okay. Okay. Let us consider some uh, path primitives, some basic uh, geometric concepts that allows us to represent a, cur a curve in the 3D space. And we will need some uh, definition. So our point P is a generic function of uh, what we call the, a curvilinear, curvilinear abscissa uh, uh, with uh, the parameter S as a, a scalar. So what we do want is that the point P goes from the initial to the final point according to these parameters. Typically, S will go from 0 to 1 or 0 to something else. Okay, According to this parameter described the position of P along the primitive. This is a generic one. We will see a segment and a, a circle. Now, in any moment, we can define a frame um, that represents position orientation of P. The frame is characterized by a, tan the, a tangent unit vector, the partial derivative of P with respect to the parameter S, A normal vector, the normal vector is the one during the bands going um, to the, 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 uh, the center of interpolating circle. And then another vector that is obtained uh, by closing the right hand side frame. Okay. Segment. Okay, 3D segment. The function that describes a 3D segment is very easy. And it's this one. Starting from the initial point, I point to the, toward the final point. And uh, it means that uh, I point toward the vector that is given by P final minus P initial, because I know that uh, this is exactly the, the, the vector that uh, goes from initial to final. I normalize this so by the norm in, in, in order to have it uh, as a, a unit vector. And this is my parameter. When it is zero, I basically have uh, the initial point. When the parameter is equal to the norm of the displacement of the segment, well, I have PI plus PF minus PI, PF. Very, very easy. And this represents a segment in the 3D space, parameterized with respect to a scalar. OK? 
okay now what is the velocity basically if i have a segment the velocity is always exactly parallel to that segment and this can be noticed by computing the partial derivative with respect to s okay this is the unit vector pointing from the initial to the final we don't have uh, the, the second derivative is, is equal to zero because the curvature is zero. So the frame is not defined in a unique way, and you can decide where to put the other two. But what is important is that the 3D segment can be defined really easily. Now, the circle is a little bit uh, less intuitive, but it is simple as well once I show you the way it is uh, built. Okay, so how this uh, circle is built is a, is a circle with a certain origin and uh, uh, whatever kind of orientation, of course. Okay, we can select what we want. First of all, we build uh, a circle with center in the, in the origin and radius rho. If I draw this one, Okay, if I draw this one and uh, I look that this is rho cosinus s divided by rho. It means that for s equal zero, it, uh, uh, the, the value is rho. Okay, so for s equal zero, this is rho x coordinates and uh, y coordinate is zero then for s different from zero the angle here is s rho and i have uh, cosinus here cosinus here and sinus uh, is uh, here okay it means simply that uh, with uh, this function i'm building uh, a circle with the center in the region and the radius rho then uh, i take uh, this circle rotate whenever i want if I want not being parallel to the horizontal plane, it depends from the application, uh, actually. That's different from the application. And uh, I can translate uh, whenever I want, okay? Actually, this is my function that represents a circle in the 3D space, uh, parametrized with respect to the scalar. Now, what is the tangent? Let me just, I mean, the tangent is basically will be this one. And if you, if you compute, I mean, the, 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 partial derivative with respect to S, you got exactly this uh, vector here, then uh, rotated about R. R is constant, is, is given by the, by the application, okay? And then I have, of course, also the 
the, the partial derivative with respect to S twice. Now, Okay, but what is the time law that uh, I assign to my primitives? Because I, I'm able to, to build a path as a function of S. I'm able to, to build a, a circle as a function of S, but where is the time? Well, the time will be in S. That is a scalar. So now what is important is that uh, I make my trajectory function of a scalar that it will, it will be related to time. Now, if I want to compute uh, the linear velocity of my point P, this is basically given by partial derivative of P with respect to S, and then S with respect to time. Basically, it's S dot with direction, the tangent of the segment. It's a very intuitive, okay? It means that uh, S will be built with a, for example, trapezoidal velocity profile. And here, the position is just repeated for the segment, and the velocity here is computed as S dot T, S dot, and this is the unit vector, all is the unit vector, that is pointing from uh, the initial to the final point. And also the acceleration, I just make the, the time derivative twice. The acceleration is uh, S D dot, double dot, and the direction is the same. It's a segment, so everything is from the initial to the final point, okay? Velocity is an acceleration in the Cartesian space I'm going from here to here. Now, for the circle, for the circumference, this is the position. Well, the velocity, if you look at the velocity, is the same as before with the S dot here. Clearly, the velocity is always tangent to the circle. And if you make the, the, the computation, this is cosinus, minus sinus, sinus, cosinus. So it's always a tangent to the circle multiplied by the rotation. So this uh, representation allows us to separate the part related to the circle and the part related to the constant rotation in order that we can visualize it. And then also there is also the acceleration that is going to the, toward the center. What is important is that uh, I can compute easily the linear velocity. And this is something that you will do for your exam, to build a trajectory in the Cartesian space with a certain time law to be followed by the robot, okay? But where is the difficult part of of the operational space, well, the difficult part is, as usual, the orientation. But now, we discussed already several times about orientation, and uh, I understand, I remember that uh, minimal representation of the orientation are not are, are very easy with respect to the interpretation of Euler angles, for example, Roll pitch you are very easy to understand for an uh, autonomous car, for an underwater vehicle, for an aerial vehicle. But the differential concept, so the angular velocity, they are not very useful. 
So the time derivative of the orientation representation does not have a physical meaning. It's not very useful. Now, if uh, I uh, consider Euler angles uh, as if they were 3D points, and, and thus if I assign to the orientation a uh, simple interpolation from the initial to the final orientation, I can do it mathematically, but the issue is the same as uh, earlier. This guy here does not have a physical meaning. And the issue is the same that I showed you with the, with the um, feedback of the orient orientation in last uh, lecture, the issue with the, the unclear path followed by the, the end effect of the orientation. Okay, we can do it, but we lose totally the, 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 the geometric interpretation, better to build in a different way. In some cases, it's not just better, it's mandatory. For example, if I need to screw, I need to rotate around a certain axis, okay? And uh, I cannot use uh, ZYZ, because otherwise I do not guarantee this axis. It's much better to use, uh, for example, well, for example, For example, axis angle. And that's why, I mean, we also need a little bit of axis angle, the concept of axis angle, at least. Then we implement feedback with, with um, uh, quaternion, but we need to understand what is axis angle. Let's see. I have uh, the initial rotation. I take it from uh, the homogeneous transformation matrix. I do have uh, the final rotation given by the application. Someone say, okay, I want to go from here to here. Fine. I know that uh, the final rotation is equal the initial plus the displacement. This is something that we already see is, is the same as the, error, the rotation error, the, this operation. In that way, I can uh, extrapolate the rotation that I need to go from initial to final. And this rotation is simply given by, uh, if I have uh, Rf is equal Ri, we, we remember that it means that here is a zero is embedded, okay? R I F in order to uh, extrapolate uh, R I F here, I can left multiply by R zero one at minus one, but this is equal to. R01 transpose. Okay, and this is exactly what is written, what is written here, because here I have this one at the right hand side. This simplifies, and I have RIF. Okay. So those are known, are given by the problem. So are two uh, rotation matrices. I can compute the rotation that I do need. Okay? And I have uh, nine numbers. Now, I do extract from this rotation the axis and the angles. It means that I'm extracting the axis around which I need to rotate and the angle from to go from e, I to F, I initial to final, okay? It means that uh, easily from this rotation, 
I have final, uh, I have, yes, the, the, the angle to be rotated and the direction, the unit vector. Now, and this is uh, the only point where you have to think a little bit, the direction of rotation will be kept constant and the time law will be assigned to the angle, so to theta, going from zero to theta f. So now, I build a rotation that in the beginning for t equal zero is the identity, and uh, at final time is exactly the rotation that I need to go from initial to final. I rotate around the constant axis, so now it's not by chance, it's made on purpose. I am building my trajectory in order to rotate around the constant axis, and so now I simply have to assign a time law to theta, such that theta is equal zero in zero, and theta is equal the final theta and f in t. The instantaneous rotation is this one. Now, this is the way that I use to build my desired position and orientation at the end of it. Okay? This is the instantaneous rotation that I will use in my control loop. For example, I, from that one, I extract the quaternion and provide it to my uh, kinematic controller. Okay? So now, this is all. What is... Uh, the, the, the important concepts that we need to, to, to keep. We will be able to build trajectory in the operational space in position and orientation by properly assigning a time law. The time law that we will develop in this class will be the trapezoidal velocity profile. Okay, then those are, I mean, the, 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 the pragmatic take-home messages from this lecture. But the overall picture in the beginning of the class is to give you an idea of what is actually needed in a real robot. Uh, a small uh, clarification needs to be, to be done. Uh, if uh, I'm working uh, in an industrial environment and uh, everything is structured, it means that everything is in a known position, I can plan my trajectory in advance, offline. I just uh, trial and make try and error and then whatever in the way I want. And then I implement it on the robot and the robot for us all his life will always make the same trajectory. So in industrial environment, the problem is there, but can be solved very uh, without, uh, without uh, the constraint of real time. I just can have all the time that I want to, to develop the proper trajectory. In advanced robotics, when uh, a human uh, is coexisting with the robot or with, uh, when the environment is dynamic, or even in an industrial environment where I do know where my tool to be used uh, arrive, I need to be reactive uh, to be able to do something in real time. Okay? Uh, as I told you, next Tuesday we will make uh, the uh, trapezoidal velocity profile and for the final project you will, mean, you will need to, to be able to develop something in the operational space but intentionally, we will not make uh, an exercise on that aspect, okay? It's uh, a simple um, implementation of those concepts. Questions?
Okay, remotely any question? Okay, I stop the registration and... Uh,